Council included, do you see that we have a quorum? Yes, sir, we do. Having a quorum, I now declare this meeting open. <coughs> I'll ask <coughs> Lonnie Waters, if you will, please, to lead us in the invocation. Lord, as we bow here tonight, Lord, we know it's coming to another end of another year, coming into the Christmas season. Lord, we just let us all remember what Christmas is all about. Lord, as we go into the new coming year, Lord, we just ask for guidance. We ask for help. We ask for wisdom to watch over our community. And we ask for the citizens of this county and every county around us. Lord, we just ask you for these favors and blessings in your holy name. Amen. 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 And Councilman Raphael, Kurt Raphael, will you please lead us in our place, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. item on our agenda is to adopt the agenda in front of us and we have a change so I want to at this time let all of you know if you're here for any part of uh, item H which was a consideration of, of an ordinance to rezone and annexation of a parcel north of us uh, at 855 North Main that, uh, that request has been withdrawn by the applicant so we will not be discussing that tonight so those of you who are here i don't want you to waste your time but i want to welcome you to stay with us but i'll give you this opportunity if that's why you're here we will have nothing tonight okay thank you thank you council you have in front of you our agenda and at this time, I'd entertain a motion that we adopt the uh, agenda as presented. Mm -hmm. We adopt the agenda as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Agenda is adopted. Council, you also have in your packet approved minutes of October the 22nd, 2020. Our work session and the November the 2nd, 2020 regular council meeting, as well as the November the 9th budget public hearing meeting. I would entertain a motion at this time that we adopt those, edit, those minutes as presented. So moved. And a second, please. <coughs> second. Motion and a second to adopt the minutes as approved. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed thing. The motion carries. <coughs> Excuse me. Under old business, item A, final consideration and approval of ordinance 2020-24 for the adoption of the amendment of chapter 94 city of Jasper zone ordinance and the addition of chapter 95 science of the official code of the city of Jasper. And I believe, Brandon, that we're going to table that as Yes, and just for uh, for council and for the public, uh, this was a staff initiated request to table uh, for consideration by the mayor and council uh, due to the fact that uh, after the planning and zoning public hearing, the city attorney and I had discussed that uh, we did not yet prepare a final uh, zoning map to go in concert with the new zoning uh, ordinance changes. So therefore, rather than to try to rush it, uh, we'll have it prepared for y'all by the January 4th meeting, hopefully. So at this time, I'm going to take a motion to table. Motion to table. And a second, please. Second. Any, second. any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. The opposed saying motion carries with table. Item B, consideration of approval of resolution number 2020-11 until February the 1st, 2021. This is a zoning moratorium extension. And Brandon, I would ask you to bring that to us. 
Yes, sir. Uh, you may recall we had originally set that in April uh, to expire in conjunction with what we thought we would have uh, finalized by the December 7th meeting. Unfortunately, because of the uh, oversight of the zoning map, uh, we do need to um, do an extension uh, to give us a little more time to get it approved. So moved. Motion to to uh, approve the extension. Second. And a second to approve the extension. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say we will extend. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have COVID, but I do have some drains going on in my sinuses. That's your consideration. Thank you. Council has a consideration to approve resolution number 2020-12, which is our GERMA. Uh, and I will let uh, uh, Beverly Ragland bring this to us. At our November 2 council meeting, we uh, brought a quote from GARMA, which is, uh, it stands for Georgia Interlocal Risk Management Agency, and it's for insurance to cover our properties and um, liability. And at which time, it was uh, Mayor Board's desire to go ahead with switching over and the um, resolution that's in the packet is what they require for us to have coverage and the coverage will begin January 1. We did write the letter to um, sever the relationship and we are um, going to be with this for two years. They, re they require two year commitment. So after a period of two years we will go out for bid again. And it did save us money. We anticipate um, saving money on legal fees as well. Council, we entertain a motion to approve this resolution 2020-12 so, for, for two years. So moved. And a second? Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed saying? Motion carries. And item D, consideration and approval of resolution number 2020-13, workers' compensation. And Beverly, we'll ask you to tell us about that, please. Um, this is another piece of the insurance puzzle. Um, this covers workers' comp, and both of these go through the uh, Georgia Municipal Association. We did get a quote for workers' comp insurance, and it came in about $40,000 a year cheaper. And the resolution that's attached is what's required of them to have coverage in place on the morning one. Council, we have a motion to approve resolution 2020-13 for the workers' comp for this year. So moved. And second, please. Second. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say aye. Motion carries. Item E is consideration of utilizing SPLOS proceeds 2020 for unnecessary build-out improvements at our Jasper Police Department. We've had some discussion about this in the past, and, and I think at this point we're ready to move forward. So, Brandon, will you bring that to us? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, and uh, for council and for the public, uh, during our September meeting of this year, uh, staff presented you all with the idea of uh, building out the kind of the unoccupied section of the police station headquarters. Uh, currently there are, uh, there's a whole half of the building that is underutilized in so much as there are three separate sections. Um, the total area of those three rooms uh, nearly account for the size of this council chambers, uh, about 600 square feet. So what we had envisioned doing was uh, hiring a contractor to kind of build out the inside, remove some walls, put in a couple of support columns so that we can have a training room, emergency operations center, uh, joint services between the fire and police department. Uh, currently, uh, Chief Lovell, when he were to have a, a staff meeting or some sort of, uh, when we had a recent protest this year, we basically gathered in the lobby with 
the police officers because that particular area did not have a one standalone room large enough with any sort of um, computer monitors or capability. Um, so we've utilized the county in the past and we think that partnerships can continue to, to be there. But I think it's important for us uh, when we do have some monies that are not generally obligated through general fund, uh, with SPLOS being an option now, uh, we think it's a viable option that it could then be used for uh, municipal court. Uh, currently, people who um, once a month show up, uh, they have to come to City Hall. There's normal operations that go on here uh, daily. And so even though it's only once a month, it, it can cause some conflict, uh, even when you have this particular area being a polling precinct. So although I think it's a good idea for City Hall to be utilized uh, as a public building, as, as a service and extension for public services, I do think it's a good idea to have a secondary option. Uh, and I think for minimal cost uh, to kind of retrofit that unused portion, uh, it's uh, money well spent. Uh, part of the reason we did not move forward with this uh, back in the fall was with every good idea, um, you can express it. I'm not a general contractor and I'm not a building inspector. Uh, so for any builders in the room that uh, sometimes get uh, irritated with our fire marshal or building inspector, uh, I got slapped on the wrist too by saying, Oh, we're good to go. We can we can do it. Uh, you know, we can do it under ten thousand dollars. Well, when you add in ADA compliance issues and accessibility issues, ingress egress, all the other stuff that some of y'all builders may have encountered before, uh, it can elevate the cost. Uh, as such, we've gotten some prices of up to twenty five thousand from a general contractor, and it took me a couple of months to get over the sticker shock. But as we've continued to collect 2020 SPLOS proceeds, uh, we have banked sufficient monies. Uh, we have addressed some of our public safety vehicles. Uh, we do have a plan in place for 2021 to utilize some of those SPLOS monies throughout all uh, divisions of interest. So we are at a point in time where I think we can uh, look at y'all and say uh, authorize up to a certain amount. Uh, the reason why I typically do that is if we're in the midst of construction, I like to have at least a 10 or 20% contingency for unknowns. Uh, the prices, the quotes we have in there, uh, in your packet, the lowest one being 22,850. Uh, that does, I believe, include the support columns on the front of the building uh, because they are in bad disrepair. Uh, the one item that I did not put in your packet, but I've gotten the quotes today, was I would like to investigate fencing in the rear uh, parking lot, at least the latter half of it, not the entire parking lot. Uh, the general public can still have access to the back parking lot, the front portion, but have a secured gate and entryway for our patrol officers. Um, that adds about a $10,000 plus cost. Um, I'm still, at least as city manager, trying to be mindful of even splashed money. So if I take a you know, $25,000, $30,000 build out with a $10,000 fence, uh, I want to make good and sure you all are comfortable with it and the police are comfortable with the idea. So if you authorize up to an amount, um, I think we can get started. Uh, we're definitely going to be using this building again for the uh, runoff in January. Um, there's no way we'd be able to get it done in time. But my goal would be sometime in the spring, uh, we would have court over there and a um, nice little training area for public safety. And do you have an amount specific on that? that I, had put, up to? I had put up to 40,000 okay. um, to give a little bit of uh, grace with the uh, fence uh, and any contingencies that obviously I'm human and my 10,000 elevated 20 plus pretty quickly so uh, don't want to make that mistake again with HVAC and electrical. Council have entertained a motion to approve using SPLOS funds up to 40,000 for the build out down at the Jasper Police Department. 
So moved. And a second, please. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Did I hear a no? No, she said no, aye. Of the, that was Ann saying. She said aye. Okay. Motion carries. <laughs> Item uh, next is the consideration of approval of the bid for the raw water vertical turbine pump and motor. And I can't believe what these things cost, but by the same token, Brandon, if you will tell us that. Yes, sir. You may recall we had originally put this out for, for bid, um, and we did not have uh, any vendors. So we talked with the vendors and found out that uh, they did not want to do the entire project. They were more interested in supplying for uh, parts with us helping offset some of the labor with regards to plumbing and electrical. As such, uh, Lindsay and David uh, rebid, and we only had one vendor uh, that provided a bid, which is in your packet, for ProPump Solutions in the amount of $68,776.45. Uh, you may recall that this is to increase the amount of water uh, that we're able to withdraw out of our raw water intake at Long Swamp. Uh, it needs replacing, but while we're replacing, we want to upgrade too to accommodate additional uh, increased capacity withdrawal. Uh, David and his team will be having some cost incurred to do some of the labor and uh, outsource some of the electrical and plumbing as needed. Uh, I asked him earlier today uh, what his cost would be. He says minimal. Uh, you could go with about, you know, 70, 75, and as you all may recall in the spring this year when we were doing the dredging, um, David had said 5,000, I think it ended up being 10. So I reminded David that I'm gonna ask y'all for up to 80,000, um, just so that we're not in the midst of this and we go over a few thousand, I wanna make sure y'all are fully comfortable. Uh, once again, these monies um, are not even coming out of the uh, operating budget of the enterprise fund. Uh, these monies are allocated in a separate account from the bond refinancing. When we refinance the debt, we're able to tap into some equity uh, for the sole purpose of reinvesting into our infrastructure. Uh, so once again, um, just ask for your consideration. Council, I entertain a motion to approve for up to 80000 to provide this pump and necessary work. I'd like to make the motion to approve the updating thousand for the uh, bid for the raw water vertical Sherman pump and motor. Second. I have a motion and a second now. Any discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same. Motion carries. Item two, consideration for request for reduction of associated fees for Gateway at Grandview. Brandon and Michael Lipper. Brandon, I'll let you bring this to us for. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Mayor, recap. Council, this, this is a recap. It was tabled by uh, the November 2nd meeting. Uh, and not to uh, disregard uh, Michael and his team who, who are here, but I do want to kind of give a quick little overview and then also just kind of give a new perspective at least from staff's perspective and, and speaking with um, the developers. Uh, you may recall that this is the development along 515 um, just as you're going out of town on the right just before you get 108. Uh, they currently uh, have planned um, what's being turned up there now the dirt is for 103 a single family residential age restricted community uh, to be in concert with additional phases as a community and village. Uh, there have been some significant challenges. Um, all the while, the developers have acknowledged that, uh, short of uh, the city, we've done all we can do to help accommodate uh, and partnering. Uh, one of the things that I said that I would like to articulate is that. Um, from an economic development perspective, uh, I do want to make it known that as a gateway into our community, this particular project, as it's called Gateway, is important, uh, is a viable 
uh, product, I believe. I do think that the council, at the time they approved for the PUD, uh, did envision this to be a planned unit development uh, that was just going to be one particular phase among many. Uh, there has been some ownership changes. Uh, there have been some unknowns. Um, but ultimately, from my experience, uh, what changed my perspective from talking to you all tonight was relative to the cost per lot. Uh, typically, the industry standard residential is thirty-five to fifty thousand per lot. Uh, they've indicated that they're well in excess of seventy thousand per lot. That doesn't mean a whole lot, other than to me as a novice when it comes to development, that their margins at that moment do decrease. And albeit it's not the city's responsibility to try to increase margins, it is, I believe, my ability as the city to help to facilitate the success and the viable nature of this particular development, as well as to help encourage other investors uh, that they may be seeking for additional products. So I think what has been articulated to the developer is that staff cannot commit to uh, providing any sort of reduction in the cost of construction aid. Uh, however, in doing our due diligence, as it was requested from the November meeting, uh, the city staff as well as the legal team did decipher the fact that we can uh, provide some level of incentives discretionary based upon each instance. Uh, so it's not a blanket that's you know for, for any and every phase or any and every development, but when there are unique circumstances that arise, you all have the ability to use your discretion in how you want to provide any sort of uh, reductions. So as a recap, you've got 103 units uh, planning to go up. You've got a uh, per lot of about 3,500 cost of construction. Uh, in your packet, staff did not recommend anything other than if you all wanted to look at this on a per lot basis, um, we advised the applicant and the developer that our approach would not be some, you know, amount necessarily, but just a, at least, if there's a desire um, to look at it per lot, uh, if you all want to keep it, or reduce their up. Council, we've had conversations individually uh, tonight. We are going to do something, so please, uh, please advise me of, of any uh, any ideas you have or how you'd like to proceed with this request. I think giving a uh, a lump sum would be a, a a drain on the on the finances of the city. And I would gladly uh, consider something per lot, possibly in the neighborhood of a thousand dollars, off of the thirty-five hundred throughout the project. That spreads it through. Michael, I think you said the other day this is three three uh, year project. That's yeah. correct. That's, but on this space specifically. Yeah, that's correct. And, uh, and I'm a, just talking about. It's a about, ten year project. And I'm just talking about a. Uh, Reduction per lot on this phase, not everything that comes up in the future. Understood. But it does spread the effect on the city over a three year period rather than all, uh, at, all at once. So, would you <clears throat> make that in the form of a uh, motion? I would. So, <clears throat> Council, we have in front of us a motion to give some rebate back of about $1,000, I think is the motion per lot for 103 lots based on as they uh, as they build out. So I would ask for uh, any further discussion. The question I would have in reference to the time period, I believe in, in, in our notes this time about moving forward with 53 of the proposed 103. So 53 uh, units. In, in uh, the first phase of the development, that's correct. We, we've We've actually, uh, we've got 20 uh, <clears throat> lots under, uh, currently under contract with clients that uh, will be delivered. Uh, we anticipate selling out of that first phase uh, by June uh, and delivery for those units by the end of the year. And then 
uh, halfway into 2022, we'd be done with this phase and moving on to phase three. Uh, we, we, our original plan was to start phase one here uh, in the first quarter of 2021, uh, which is still a plan that, that uh, phase is funded. But on this specific phase, yes, uh, it's 53, but we plan to sell that out and uh, uh, sell the other 53 by. <coughs> And uh, a three-year uh, period year with the for, for, for 2020, 2020 to less than <clears throat> So that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think the three-year period was from start to finish. We're currently a year and a half into it, so we're 18 months away. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. I would ask for a second for the motion. I have a motion on the table. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same. The motion carries. Under section 7, I made public hearing. This is a request to abandon a certain street and public rights of way described as an old road bed between Cove Road where the right-of-way varies, Longview Road, which has an 80-foot right-of-way, and through property owned by Leslie Michelle Chumley Glover as executor under the last will and testament of James Hall, deceased, and Doris Hall. Gentlemen, if you will, please bring more secret things to us. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Council for the Public, uh, this is one of those items to where I cannot say, as you recall or as you are aware, uh, you have no idea what I'm about to talk about because this was not a, a staff-led initiative. Uh, some months back, uh, we had a, uh, a city attorney, uh, not a city attorney, excuse me, an attorney reach out to our city attorney and the county attorney. Uh, there's a parcel that's platted uh, up on the screen uh, that is, uh, I guess, during the due diligence or title search from the uh, attorney, Phil Bettis. Uh, it was revealed that there was a, a platted old roadbed and that the property owners were interested in whether or not it was being utilized and or had any plans to be utilized. Uh, albeit I've only been here since February of 19, but I was unaware of any particular everyday use. Uh, I certainly, if you're familiar with the topography as you go on uh, down Cove Road before you get to our um, Bridge, you look on the right, and there's some property that, uh, candidly, I, my answer was no, we're not using it, and I don't think there's any issues. However, uh, we confirmed with David Hall and Lonnie Waters, and they seem to substantiate the, the fact that that particular old roadbed uh, was not in immediate need of the city. And therefore, Mr. Bettis uh, worked with uh, Mr. Siphon, our city attorney. To arrive at the point that procedurally, in accordance with the state of Georgia, uh, we would need to conduct a public hearing uh, so that if there is uh, public who'd like to be heard relative to this particular old roadbed uh, and or uh, the elected body, uh, then we need to have the public hearing, which is what we are doing this evening. Um, Shortly after that, uh, there would be the need to then consider whether or not there's uh, any additional action. So let me ask anyone in the audience, that is, are you here to speak to this? I am, yes. Okay, and if you would stand, please, and tell us your name. My name's Keith Herndon, and we live at uh, 1514 Cobra, which we never realized that that road had a name. Long view. <clears throat> now the road bed that I'm assuming you're speaking of, if you look at older plats, it's actually the old Dawsonville Highway. And it was the original one of the original routes into Jasper. So if you come down our drive, our access, there's two concrete right-of-way markers way up on the on the hill. That road bed actually turns and comes down and
comes back down onto the access that we use to get to our property and is actually part of our concrete driveway. So my question is, how does the two drives intersecting and then separating uh, going to have any effect on our property or our property value? I do not know the answer to that, sir. Mr. Mayor, if I could, uh, we do have uh, David Siphon and I believe the attorney that had requested, um, and they can speak to this, but I do believe that the only consideration for this evening uh, is just the platted roadbed on the parcel as illustrated by the uh, exhibit. Uh, it does not include any additional sections of any old roadbed that is not specifically on that particular plat. When you're saying plat, you're referring to the 3.11 acres? Yes, sir. Owned, the, by, this, owned by the hall. If you could take a look at uh, the screen, uh, the platted exhibit is what Mr. Bettis has provided um, as being considered the old roadbed. So just for purposes of council's consideration, uh, it would not entail encroaching on any other private property. Uh, it would merely be just the parcel uh, for this one. Just Ms. Hollis, Yes, sir. Okay. So, so it's not going to have any effect on, because we cross city property to get to county property and have for, you know, beyond. And, and Mr. Siphon or Mr. Bettis, you can just give your legal opinion that this public hearing and any future consideration with regards to the old roadbed is just merely for the platted parcel and has nothing to do with any other access or other property owners, correct? That's my understanding, uh, Mr. Douglas, that the only part of that old roadbed that would be abandoned and not be a part or the city wouldn't claim it is just what is shown on the plat that's on the screen. It's just that old roadbed within the 3.11 acres. It, it, you know, so they're not asking where the roadbed goes outside of that flatted property. They're not asking for abandonment of that. So it's just this old roadbed as shown within the flatted area. Okay. Well, I guess the main reason I brought the question up was because of if there was any effect on us property-wise, but I've always it's always puzzled me why there's concrete right-of-way markers up on the hall's property. Is that to reference that old roadbed? Presumably, yes. Sir. I part of part of the approach that we've taken, and uh, David and Phil, if y'all can hear me, uh, I think if you look at the exhibit, the idea with the property owner was to make sure that. Uh, if in fact they ever wanted to build something on that lot, that if they were to go and try to pull permits with the, the city or county to build something, that there's not a platted road in the middle of their parcel. Right. So beyond that, uh, it is not the city, the county, or the attorney's intentions okay. to in any way uh, restrict access to any other property owners. Okay. Um, because well, that's just that's what yeah. we're here for. If I can get clarification on it. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, thank and you. Sir, in the back, are you wanting to speak to this issue also? Yes, I am. Please. Longview Road does not belong on the west side of Cove Road called uh, Long Farm Creek. All right, tell us your name, sir. Western Babcock. Okay. And, and specifically state what you're saying to us 
the Longview Road belongs a quarter mile up the road on my property. Interesting. Longview Road was the original Grandview. It went from Cove Road number one to the Fool's House to the Reese's House. It didn't go on the other side of the creek. The road on the other side of the creek goes to a marble quarry. So as it applies to this specific piece of property, you're, asked, you're saying that the name of the road might not be correct. The name of the road is not correct. Interesting. Okay, Mr. Cycle, would you like to address that, sir? Probably not. Uh, I have not done a title search as to all of this. Um, you know, whether the Longview Road name is correct or not, um, I think the issue is more, uh, you know, is anybody using this old road bed that's on the 3.11 acres uh, and that's the purpose of the public hearing is to try to determine if anyone is using that old roadbed and uh, what it represented to me and to the city is that uh, basically although that old roadbed is shown on the flat that it wasn't really used by anyone, but as you can see from the flat, it basically goes through the center of the property, and, and it would make property difficult to develop. So from a title standard viewpoint, they were trying to uh, just eliminate that old roadbed uh, as being any claim uh, regarding it as being a public road where then they would have the entire 3.11 acres to develop. So, uh, and David, if, if, if I could, Mr. Mayor, and for the uh, council and for the public, uh, Based upon staff's interpretation of what legal was trying to achieve, the, the way that the public hearing is entitled uh, is, has nothing to do with Longview Road. So I think the confusion lies in that when you're having to consider any sort of abandoning of property, the actual name is considered Old Road Bed, in quotation marks so the parcel or the plat that's before you the only thing being considered through this public hearing and any subsequent decisions pertains to the old road bed for purposes of advertising or to get you all out here this evening to give a point of reference is that old road bed in between old cove and lawn view so it has nothing to do with cove or lawn view, the only thing pertaining to this public hearing is just the old road bed platted road bed. The lawn view is just a point of reference name, and the old code road is just the purpose of the name. So it has nothing to do with those two roads. The only thing that this pertains to is just the old road bed, but if you advertise consideration of closing or consideration of banding old road bed and you're a city or a county and you just advertise it with no point of reference then the public has no idea what old road bed are you referencing so you have to advertise to get your bearings so you can see on the plat Longview Cove in between old road bed I hope that helps well, a little bit. I, I think where the confusion is, is the, the road that we access our home with and the old road bed come together. 
Yes. And and that's that's just to make sure Mr. Bettis and um, they they intertwine. Yeah. The the only thing is platted property up there. So with regards to procedurally, the way this would work is a public hearing has to be done by the local government. Right. That we have no public purpose behind the old road bed. Right. Then any further consideration is then just it makes that property unencumbered and so then it has nothing to do with anything else beyond just the outline of the plaque and so what would happen is if council so chooses not to presuppose choose to say we have no public purpose then it affords the opportunity to Mr. Bettis as legal counsel to the property owner to resurvey based upon the plat and to just take off the old road bed to then it be recorded and unencumbered for the property owner to know that we're not going to come in and build a road following the old road bed. All right. Thank you, sir, for your comments. What do we get out of this? You we're going to get my road back. Do I get my name back? Or? See, my easement was taken away from me, and my road was taken away from me to give y'all overgrown, old, longview road. As I understand it, we're going to take that old road bed, whatever you call it, and take it off of that map. I understand because that. Because there's no public access to that, there's no public uh, traffic through that particular piece of property. You're not understanding. This Probably road is not. supposed to go to my property. It's not supposed to be where y'all are saying it is. Well, this is it? my road. This is supposed to be going to my property, not Mr. Herndon's property. If, if I might, the simple answer is if council decides to abandon, that's not our fight. That's not our fight. It wasn't abandoned. The post office gave us permission to use Cove Road for our mailboxes. That's the only thing. The problem is, you don't know where Old Cove Road is on my property. Everybody's calling Grandview Old Cove Road. That's what the problem is. Pretty well sure that you're correct. We don't know. But on this particular piece of property, we're going to abandon that road. And that's, our, that's what we're doing here today. So. Okay, thank you so much. Is there any further comment on this? Uh, yes, sir. If you don't mind, this is uh, Spencer Bettis. I'm a Phil, Phil Bettis' son. I had, I'm filling in for him tonight. Uh, from any indication we've seen, this road has not been utilized. It has trees growing in the, in the bed. And there's, from what we can tell, no public beneficial use to it. It's not in use. Uh, and there hasn't been any, any maintenance on it, if there ever has been, for a very long time. Uh, so that's purely why uh, it's to clear title for this property to, to make it uh, useful for Miss Hall. That is part of the reason we are requesting this uh, abandonment. Thank you, sir. Thank Any, you. Anyone else, either online or in, in the audience? If not, we're going to move to new business under item A. Consideration of abandoning and quick claim a certain street and rights of way for an old road bed between two different roads and in accordance with resolution number 2020-14. <coughs> Council, I'd entertain a motion to approve this. Make a motion to approve for the resolution. And I need a second, please. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion with Council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Under new business, item B. Consideration, and this is my favorite. <laughs> consideration. <laughs> We've talked about it enough. Consideration and approval of resolution number 2020-15, the 2021 budget. I have nothing further to say about our budget other than to tell all of you in this room that you cannot imagine the work that all of us have put together on this budget. Probably it's going to be the same amount next year, but I'll tell you to a businessman, it was a new experience. 
I'd like, well, to, uh, I'd like to make a resolution we approve the 2021 budget. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Brandon, would you like to say something about this wonderful budget? Okay. Any further discussion from council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That motion is carried unanimous. Amen. Okay, item C, consideration of the approval of resolution number 2020-16, the 2021 city of Jasper Water minimum fee. Brandon, if you would please bring this to us. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you may recall, for about nine meetings uh, and countless hours, we talked about revenues and expenditures. Uh, we do have the need at the staff level identifying in 2020 that there is the need to uh, enter into uh, sell agreements with our uh, surrounding partners for the acquisition of potable water. Uh, as such, we identified that the rate structure that currently exists uh, is sufficient uh, for our needs. However, the minimum uh, per monthly that is charged uh, does need to be increased to offset the uh, projected amount of monies we'll have to expend in uh, basically buying water from our surrounding neighbors. Uh, as such, you have before you uh, tonight the resolution for the $10 uh, minimum. Uh, beyond that, uh, I don't have anything further. Thank you, sir. And uh, Beverly, do you have something to say on this? No, I was just going to say that, um, you know, our, our budget that just got approved did reflect the $10 minimum right, increase. Um, so. Thank you, Beverly. Yes, So, Council, I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, resolution 2020-16 for the uh, water minimum fee increase of $10. Motion to move uh, approve resolution 2020-16. And I need a second, please. Second. Have a motion and second to approve. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion is unanimously approved. Item D is a consideration of engagement letter from Rustin and Company for auditing services for our 2020 audit. I believe that we are required to do this, and we'll ask Beverly and Lindsay to bring this to us. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We did speak with the auditors last week, and we have a game plan beginning the week of January the 11th. Um, of course, the first thing they'll do is come out and uh, check our inventory. But um, they did not increase. It's uh, essentially the same as it was last year. And we have a good working relationship with them and would like to um, ask that uh, the engagement letter be approved. Great. Ms. Lindsay, do you have anything to say about this, Bruce? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Council, I'd entertain a motion to approve the engagement letter for Rustin and Company for all. Motion to approve the engagement letter for Rustin and Company. <coughs> and I need a second, please. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, engagement letter for Rustin and Company. Is there any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say motion carried. Item me is consideration of ordinance 2020 25 and 2020 26. Request of rezone and annexation of parcel number 065046.00. One at Worley Crossroads to R3 into the city of Jasper. Brad, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, the November 24th uh, planning and zoning uh, meeting, there was a public hearing um, on this particular matter. Um, you have the staff report that was provided to the planning and zoning commission members. Um, I will not touch on every single item, but just for uh, a refresher, it's been a while. Um, procedurally, uh, when there's a property owner who is desirous of uh, doing any 
land use into the city, whether it be annexation, rezonings, etc. Uh, they complete an application, therefore city staff has to process that application in accordance with section uh, 94 uh, of our code of ordinances, which is our zoning ordinance section. Uh, we do have criteria that we have to uh, look at. Uh, basically, you want to make sure that the property um, is compatible of uses with regards to uh, not being an excessive burden on uh, public service, uh, utilities, etc. Uh, you do have in the packet the disclaimer that uh, it is a little um, ways outside of our core city limits, but it is abutting to uh, an existing parcel in the city, uh, which currently we're working with the same owner um, to get water sewer. Uh, so that is currently being addressed. Um, with regards to land use, the applicant is interested in developing this um, into residential single-family homes. Uh, the R3 zoning classification uh, would yield 13,000 square foot lot size, um, which, once again, uh, if you take it what it is currently zoned at in the county, uh, that is a smaller lot size. Uh, however, we do feel as though that from a land use perspective, adjacent to the PUD, uh, that it is compatible land use with regards to a smaller lot, uh, albeit I believe these lots may be comparable in size to the PUD, uh, because I think through their development uh, it will yield less than had originally anticipated last year. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we did have the public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, we did disclose that the county had provided a letter of non-objection to the city. Uh, the chairman uh, did uh, call for the public. There was one uh, property owner who had uh, indicated that uh, their experience was that the traffic that was coming from old 5 to 515, they were using that as a cut through and that the uh, continued burden of adding more vehicles uh, would put a strain on the already uh, traffic present. Uh, ultimately, um, the PNZ did find that uh, they had a favorable recommendation uh, to you all, so we bring it before you all for consideration. Uh, there is a ordinance for zoning uh, and annexation in your packet, uh, if you so choose. And Lonnie, you're on this. Do you have anything to say about this? Uh, we have, our office hasn't had any complaints, any negative comments, any, any kind of comments, negative or positive. Uh, this will be a standalone uh, parcel that will be developed. It will go with those guidelines. It's not attached to any other, as Brandon has already indicated. All the advertisement, all the letters, everything has been distributed as it should. So, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council, I have a motion to approve. Uh, Orders number 2025 and 2026 to rezone and add. Mm -hmm. And a second, please. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say. The motion carries. Item uh, is the consideration of ordinance number 2020-27 and 28. <coughs> Excuse me. Request of rezone and annexation of parcel 065057 at 84 Lower Dalla Mill Road to C2 into the city of Jasper. I think locally we pronounce that Dowdy, but whatever will work legally. Brandon, if you will, please. Yes, sir. I think I may have called that. I believe I called it Dowdy and it's rubbed off on me a little bit there. Thank you. Dowdy, Dowdy, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nonetheless, um, the, uh, the applicant, uh, once again, we'll go through the procedural stuff for the applicant owner, Mr. Copeland, uh, did request for annexation utilized city services. Uh, as you can see on the exhibit, the aerial, uh, it is a candidate by virtue of being uh, contiguous with city property. Uh, for purposes of the next agenda item, 
Uh, in talking with legal, we did feel as though that uh, because the parcels were uh, essentially side by side, uh, I think we did indicate, uh, no, I don't think we did. Yeah, we did. We did indicate that they would be the same uh, ordinance uh, by way of any sort of consideration of annexation and zoning. Uh, we did look in this particular parcel as illustrated on this exhibit and then probably four or five pages down. Um, it's currently zoned residential. Uh, so from a uh, compatibility perspective, uh, to t change it to a commercial zoning uh, is inconsistent. However, we did receive a letter of non-objection from the county with regards to this annexation request. Uh, from a future land use development map, uh, this parcel, as it is adjacent to um, Highway 515, uh, obviously, it does common sensically tell you it's a candidate for commercial development, uh, in so much as um, residentially high density uh, and commercial are candidates for your highway business corridor. Uh, there is surrounding uh, land use that indicates highway business in the county. Uh, so, when we analyze this particular request, we did have to take into consideration that with its proximity to 515 adjacent to, changing it from residential to commercial um, would be no problem. Uh, PNZ did hear this public hearing. Uh, Chairman Buckingham inquired from the city attorney uh, if there was any problem with the zoning classification uh, as requested. Uh, there was no indication of any issues with regards to the uh, letter of non-objection. So it was unanimously um, approved to move forward for y'all's favorable consideration. Council has a motion to approve the 2027 and 2028. Uh, request the rezone and annexation of parcel 065057 uh, to C2 into the city of Jasper. So, I have a motion to, to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion by council? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when we're looking at the um, first one that is split on both sides, the 515, uh -huh. how much land is over on the, the smaller piece of that track? How much land is that? Is that buildable? Or something. Uh, the developer is using that piece of property for solar roses or tension ponds, things like that, for other developments, and also the stormwater is going to be coming off the property that you have already voted that as in. It is not a buildable lot, correct? And it is just going to be used for green space, solar erosion, <coughs> whatever it needs to be to make this development happen. Thank you. You're talking about this right here? Yes. That's right. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say. <coughs> and the motion carries. Item G is a consideration of orders 2020-27 and 2020-28. And for another parcel, 065055.003 at Lower Dowdy Mill to C2 into the city. And Brandon, if you will speak to this piece. Yes, sir. Um, same applies in so much as uh, this is the parcel uh, contiguous to the one that you just did that Mr. Seifel and I uh, included <coughs> in that same particular ordinance. Um, so not to presuppose that you're going to approve this one as well. Uh, mm -hmm. If, in fact, that there is a desire not to, uh, we would just merely extract this one out of the aforementioned ordinances. But nonetheless, uh, same analysis, I believe that the uh, owner uh, developer is interested in this commercial property uh, or this property for commercial use to identify uh, whether or not this is going to be uh, basically replatted as one contiguous or refitted. Uh, uh, for
for purposes, because as you can see from the shape, it's, it's a little unique in its shape. Uh, so I think this was uh, purchased and then moved forward with uh, to try to square off a little bit. That's pretty accurate, I think. Okay. Council, I would entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 2027-2028 for rezoning and annexation of parcel number 065055.003 at Lower Daddy Mills C2. So moved. And I need a second, please. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Uh, Opposed? Carried unanimously. Ladies and gentlemen, item H on your agenda. Uh, at the uh, applicant's request, uh, we have a request to table. Uh, I will entertain a motion at this time that we allow the uh, applicant to uh, table this. So, so moved. And I need a second, please. Second. Have a motion and a second to table with this list 2020-29 and 2020-30. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed, same. <coughs> motion carries. Item I, consideration of utilizing three parking spaces along South Main Street for installation and operation of an electric vehicle charge station. And Brandon and Dr. Robert Keller. Brandon, would you bring this to us and let Dr. Keller have yes, sir. the conversation? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, I will tell you that in about 15 years of uh, dealing with uh, municipal government, uh, it's very rare it ever happens to where you have a <coughs> private property owner uh, approach you and ask to put restrictions on uh, public parking uh, for the overall good of the community. Uh, I say that as a precursor that when the request was brought forward uh, at the staff level, I did not hesitate to uh, be desirous of putting this on y'all's agenda because I felt as though that when a business owner uh, wants to uh, take an investment on um, and then provide further restrictions to where his clients may not necessarily be able to park in front of his building, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good win-win. Uh, my experience is that charging stations, uh, electric vehicles, uh, it can be a destination type of venture where if you're traveling along the highway, and you pull up an app on your phone, it makes certain dings, and then you can kind of go to that particular charging station and uh, refuel uh, by way of uh, your electric vehicle. The proximity to our park area and to our downtown uh, with our various uh, business owners, uh, I think it would be a, a well-advised move um, to favorably consider. Uh, I will let Dr. Keller speak on some of the specifics. However, uh, with regards to making sure that you all are aware of what the request is, uh, it is the three parking spaces uh, as highlighted in front of um, 80 South Main Street, uh, whereupon the owner is willing to absorb the cost associated with the installation and future maintenance of uh, these charging stations. Uh, I do believe that Mr. Siphon had uh, inquired of me, and I do not have the answer, uh, but relative to who's going to pay for the electricity, uh, I can tell you from my experience, professional experience, uh, running the electric company municipal, when we installed these, the overall cost was not very much by way of your kilowatt per hour cost. Uh, so I'm not going to commit to city uh, monies paying for the charging station, uh, but I think the cost is so minimal that I don't think it should be a deterrent. But uh, I will let Dr. Keller speak on anything I've missed or provide you any specifics. 
Your Honor, City Council, Brandon, thank you. Uh, certainly appreciate it. And I would like to make a correction here. Brandon, it is not three parking spaces. It is just two. Oh, and, and, and the two, <laughs> the, two, the, the two are on the lower side. So there are three parking spaces there from the driveway to the north of, of our building down towards our property line where we abut with ETC. So it's just those two places. And thanks to Georgia Power, we have a wonderful transformer there, and they brought the power underneath the uh, underneath the road there to accommodate us to have the, uh, the the new power grid that we have at our building. So thank you, uh, John Faust. I'm sure you personally took care of that. Uh, <laughs> ACC would like to take care of any costs that are associated with this, and I'm sure that there's a question that would be raised, how do these people pay for this? Well, most of the times these uh, charging stations are a courtesy, and we would like to continue that with this one here. So for the ACC to be involved in this, it's an honor, and uh, Mayor, thank you, and, and, and I appreciate Groom Suttles for, for allowing us to bring this to us because we're honored to participate in this. We do have electric vehicles here in town. We've seen them, we've all seen them coming up uh, 515, up, you know, headed for parts north, and I'm sure we have some of them here in town. I think to be able to provide this not only says we have a current obligation, but hopefully an obligation in the future to, uh, to be able to do this for the people that come and visit Jasper. So I'm honored. Thank you for the opportunity. We will cover the cost for this. The cost is, is I think it's about $16,000 total, about $8,000 for the installation, and $8,000 for the equipment. But as I said, it's, it's de minimis compared to being able to have Jasper to offer a charging station for our business. So if you have any questions for me at this point. But the, I had some pictures here, but it would be a dual station. So it would service the two parking areas here, and they're like a holster type of charger there. Mm -hmm. uh, very seldom do we have people that kind of drive through that area getting to ETC, but very seldom do we have people parking there. I personally, we don't have people off the street coming into our building, so I think it would be an ideal location to have that there, and the closeness of proximity to not just the future part, but also 61 Main and that end of uh, that end of the city would be ideal as far as I'm concerned. So, thank you. Thank you. We greatly appreciate everything that you do for us, and thank you for this. I think it's a wonderful initiative, and I'm happy to have that started in our city. So, Councilman, we did it in a motion that we uh, approve two parking spaces along South Main Street for installation and operation of electric vehicle charging stations. So moved. And I need a second, please. Second. Motion and a second to approve for two parking spaces. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same. The motion is unanimously carried. And thank you again, Dr. Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Item J, consideration of approval of purchasing a 2021 F-250 for the development parking. Utilizing the state of Georgia contract for purchasing and to amend the 2020 budget for said purchase not to uh, exceed $38,000. Brandon and Lindsay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council. Uh, Dr. Keller just left, but I was going to say, you asked for three, hope for two. So, good job. <laughs> uh, they're smaller cars, Brandon. Yeah. They fit in. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for an F 150, I don't think. So, uh, it's a good ask. None, nonetheless, uh, Lonnie's not so lucky. Uh, there's only one coming out of this deal, uh, potentially. Uh, you may recall at the November 2nd meeting, uh, there was the direction provided to staff to look at uh, utilizing some funds uh, in the development department's budget or other uh, animal control department budget uh, to obtain a vehicle and then present a bid packet uh, for the December 7th. Uh, upon further investigation, and while Lonnie was doing his due diligence in trying to ascertain what you know, general idea of budgetary we're looking at, arrived at uh, an F-250 in the upper 40s, low 50s amount, uh, which was a little cost prohibitive. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we looked at uh, 
the actual state contract and the vendor who holds that. And as such, uh, we were able to uh, get their spec sheet. Uh, and I think the cost is 36 and some change. Uh, we would be seeking up to or not to exceed for incidentals of uh, you know, reinforced tires or, or other things that may be needed. Uh, I'm smiling, that was a joke. It doesn't work with a mask. So uh, needless to say, uh, there are monies in the 2020 budget uh, that are unallocated, specifically the IGA that we had amended the budget earlier this year in anticipation of uh, allocating some monies uh, in partnership with the county that hasn't come to fruition. Uh, so beyond that, uh, we're just asking for your favorable consideration. Council, I'm going to a motion to approve for purchase of the 2021 F-250 for the development department. So moved. And a cycle, please. Second. Any further discussion? Question, do you, City Manager, would you prefer a not to exceed of rather mm -hmm. than that amount listed? Uh, the 38. 36,121 is what I'm looking at. Would you prefer to have a not to exceed a 40 for any striping or lighting of the vehicle? Yes, sir. Any, what we ultimately do for the public, uh, Councilman Raffield's uh, question is, is very pointed in that we never want to exceed beyond that that we have to, but it prevents us from not being able to do something because we overrun. So, with your blessing, yes, sir. Okay. So we would entertain a motion to amend that to uh, not to exceed forty thousand dollars. Well, my first question would have been: Is do we know the cost of that? I, I would hate to put forty in it, not in it coming at forty-two. I I think the actual pickup truck that will be driving off the lot is going to be just under thirty-seven. So unless the state contract changes, which if we get it down before end of year. We should be good with the state contract. Um, and I think lighting and other stuff, we've got, uh, because we don't have to stripe it with PD or fire, uh, the lighting, I think, is can be done less than 1000 Okay. But don't quote me on that. Okay. So 1000 so if you give a two or $3,000 leeway. You can have two lights. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, so I need a motion to approve for 40000 up to 40000 we, we need to just change the motion. Yeah. <coughs> I made the motion. <coughs> uh, I already made the motion to receive $40,000 F-250. have a motion for $40,000 for the purchase of the 2021 F-250 for the development apartment. Be a second, please. Sir. Sir. Any further discussion by counsel? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, Opposed, same. Motion carries. For $654, it could be school bus yellow. <laughs> <laughs> we never miss a lot of going for them. Okay, we're going to do this again. Consideration approval of purchasing the 2021 F 250, two, and a 2021 service truck for the water wastewater department, utilizing the state of Georgia contract for purchasing for a Budget amount not to exceed $120,000. Utilizing <coughs> unallocated Jeep with deferral monies. So moved. Set. And a second. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve for two vehicles not to exceed $120,000. Any further That would be three vehicles. Two, two fifties and one service truck. Mm -hmm. Three. Two. Two. Okay, you are correct. Not to exceed three vehicles. <clears throat> Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All the same. Motion carries. <coughs> Item L is consideration approval of the service delivery map amendment between the city of Jasper and Pickens County relative to water and wastewater service area. Uh, Brandon, I think we've done this. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. Y'all, y'all didn't hear my joke that David Hall was jealous of Lonnie, so he wanted. But <laughs> nonetheless, um, as it as it is, we appreciate it. Uh, uh, 
The amended map that's before you uh, is what had been discussed last year relative to the fact that uh, we had a portion of our city limits in the uh, county's service delivery area for water wastewater. Uh, conversely, we had some uh, uh, county that needed to be, or the city that needed to be in the county. As such, uh, it was brought to light with the recent request of annexation. Uh, Lonnie had spoken with the county and it was pretty well suggested. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and take the, the one parcel that essentially uh, on the, the Hill City area that's circled, uh, change it to pink, uh, which is the county's, and then we take the cities to Worley Crossroads and Lower Valley. Um, and so what would happen is if conceptually you all are okay with it, um, the county would vote, we'd get the regional commission to amend the map, we'd bring the map just to kind of illustrate that that's exactly what we had determined. We fill out the correct DCA forms, since both government entities are in agreement <coughs> with, uh, and then we make it official. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Council, it had a motion to approve the uh, service delivery map amendment between the city of Jasper and Pickens County. So moved. And a second, please. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Opposed, say, motion carried unanimously. Item M is consideration of approval of services for the 2021 watershed monitoring and reporting. Brandon, if you would, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, <coughs> I sent to y'all, I'm pulling up because I didn't print it myself, but I emailed it. Um, we uh, have an obligation uh, with our permit, MP NPDES alphabet soup. Uh, Lonnie can correct me on the requirements, but we do have to do uh, watershed uh, monitoring and reporting uh, in accordance to our uh, EPD permit. As such, uh, January of this year, you all approved uh, for CCR uh, to do the work. Uh, we went ahead and preemptively had turnip seed solicit uh, quotes from uh, additional vendors. So before you all, you have uh, three vendors that made proposal uh, for 2021 monitoring and 2022 report. Uh, they are CCR for 13730 Fox Environmental, 17300 uh, Nutter and Associates, 25882 um, for full disclosure, I did advise in the email, and I'll say it publicly, uh, we do rely on uh, Turnip C uh, as our um, engineer of record. Uh, they have worked with CCR 19 and 20. Um, so even though the CCR is the apparent low uh, estimate, uh, they still feel comfortable they produce a quality product, and as such, would recommend uh, going with that. And therefore, staff would propose it as well. Council did entertain a motion that we approve the uh, services for the 2021 watershed monitoring and reporting and using CCR as our vendor. So moved. Need a second, please. Second. second. A motion to second to approve for uh, CCR to be the vendor for the 2021 watershed monitoring and reporting. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Same. <clears throat> Motion carries. Uh, item in is consideration of the Verizon request. Yes, sir. Is that going to be on our? Uh, Mr. Siphon, do you have any issues with me uh, just tabling this? Or at what point do you want us to, we're not really, I don't think, at a juncture now to have any substantive conversations? I think it would be appropriate to table it just because, as I understand it, you're still in discussions with Verizon over what they want to do about the antenna lease. So I think that would be the appropriate way to proceed. 
Okay, so we can take Do we need to also uh, uh, authorize you to enter into discussions with them? Yes, sir. So, Council, I'd entertain a motion to table uh, item in which is a consideration of a rising request and authorize our city manager to enter into discussion with them. So moved. Give me a second, please. So second. second. Any further discussion by Council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And the motion carries. Opposed, none. And we'll table that for now. Item O is the consideration of approval of the 2021 Municipal Court calendar. It's very, very straightforward. Council, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Second. Any further discussion by Council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say. Motion is carried. <coughs> Item P is consideration of approval to advertise alcohol license for BP 585 LLC doing business at Stop and Shop, located at 585 East Church Street. Ms. Lindsay, would you tell us about this? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the BP located at 585 East Church Street is changing ownership, so they made application to. Um, for their alcohol license, we're just asking permission to advertise, which is required according to our ordinance for four weeks. And we would just like to ask if we could advertise for that starting this Thursday. Okay, Council, I appreciate it. a motion to uh, approve advertising for that location. Motion to approve. And a second, please. Second. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Excuse me, opposed saying? Motion <coughs> goes. Item Q, consideration and approval of changing the registered agent for Murphy All USA Inc. Doing business as Murphy Express at number 8809. And the Tater Patch players, how are they connected? No, it's they're not. They're not. Two different uh, yep. entities in the same motion. Okay, good. Need a motion to approve, please. So moved. And a second. Second. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same. The motion carries. This one. We did not need you on that one. <coughs> uh, item R, consideration approval of 2021 alcohol license for renewal. And Ms. Lindsay, we will need you for this. Hey, Mayor and Council. Um, as of, you know, in November we had a list of restaurants and uh, or alcohol license holders in the city of Jasper um, asking for renewal. This month you have the rest of the list of alcohol license holders that are asking or seeking renewal for their 2021 alcohol license. We would just like to ask if y'all will approve those for renewal. So in your agenda background, Council, you have a list of the alcohol license names and, uh, and renewals and the license types. I would entertain a motion that we approve this list as presented. Approved as presented. I don't need a second, please. Second. Any further discussion by council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same. And the motion carries. Committee reports. Uh, development committee will ask council members Dr. Sonny Proctor and Kurt Bradfield to speak to this. Uh, no real additional information. Obviously, a lot of business tonight uh, related to our committee and our plans. Appreciate council's willingness to uh, uh, table our um, new ordinance until we get a few uh, loose ends tied off. But uh, other than that, uh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. On my end, as far as the committee, uh, no new 
news to report. Uh, what I would like to do is remind council, uh, the city staff, and the public uh, to keep in mind that we do have the projects moving forward with Peace Park, the public parking area, uh, the old Integra drive through. Uh, would not, I would be remiss if I forgot the upper portion of Stadal and the opportunity that we have there as a city to create an environment and an atmosphere with hopeful public works project in the future. Um, that, that's pretty exciting that we're going down that, that revenue. Thank you, council members. Street and Parks Committee would be council members Ann Snavy and John Faust. Well, I hope everybody's had a chance to go by and see City Park. We finally got the fence up and everything is really looking good. I'm very proud of it. I must partner with the local business and I'm very proud of the city to taking the time to try and do the park right. They've really done a very good job. Do you have anything to add to that, Ann? The only thing is I want to thank the staff. They, they've done a lot of hard work with this and, and getting everything done. So I, I agree with Jay that everybody ought to get by and visit and see now that it's completed. Thank you, council members. Administration committee will be council member Jim Looney and Ann Snavy. I, uh, I would like to start the report off by uh, making a request. Uh, council, at our November meeting, we talked about the success of the auction. Uh, I don't think any of us uh, dreamed that it would be as successful as it was. I would like to make a motion, or administrative committee would like to make a motion, that uh, we use this unexpected, part of this unexpected revenue to uh, share with our employees and thank them for the work they've given us this year. Uh, I, I would like to make a motion, the committee would like to make a motion that we uh, give a $250 bonus to each employee. Total cost would be in the neighborhood of uh, $20,000. If you remember correctly, I think we had $138,000 uh, that uh, we made on that um, on that auction, uh, I think uh, I'd like to I'd like to see council share that uh, with the employees. Council have a motion that we give each employee two hundred fifty dollars. Second. And uh, I now have a motion and a second. Any further discussion by council? No, I, I agree with Jim. I think that we just, the employees have gone above and beyond to try to get through this year. They've had a tough year, and, and like Jim said, we never expected to get that much out of it. So I, I think we're just reinvesting in our employees and, and showing our appreciation for them. So thank you. Any further discussion by Kansas? I'd echo. Well, we, all, we all wish we could do more, and uh, it's been a tough year for everybody. and. Uh, uh, we've made such progress over the last uh, year, uh, two years, and, and now um, uh, I think it's uh, something that's I was very thankful when it was recommended or discussed and um, brought to me, and I think it's a great idea. They deserve every, every penny of it. I'd like to echo what the other council members have said already. Um, 2020 has been a challenging year for each and every one of us. And I am proud of the team that we have here. Um, every single employee plays a huge part of what we do as an organization. There's not one employee here that is not appreciated for what you've done this year for our community. So thank you all very, very much. And uh, as mayor, I want to echo all of them and tell you that it is with our grateful thanks to each one of you that we do this. Oh yeah. So at this point in time, can I have a, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 There is none opposed and it motion carries unanimously. Water Wastewater Committee, that will be council members John Faust and Dr. Sonny Proctor. <laughs> One thing I'd like to comment on is we're getting close to uh, uh, the time when contracts will be laid on our new wastewater update. Um, uh, just tying it a little bit to development, I, I, I encourage each of you to watch uh, 
the, uh, the meeting from uh, last week, the public hearing, where uh, it was a very interesting meeting, but Brandon was actually able to, uh, on the fly, um, uh, lay out some of the plans that we have as it relates to public safety on the south part of our uh, area and also talk about our the future of our abilities to provide water and wastewater treatment to our citizens and uh, he did a fine job and um, just some really some big things uh, and exciting things that are coming very very soon so that's all I would say. And I'm excited with all the direction that we're going. Uh, I think David Hall's done an excellent job. Uh, I think this uh, new pump is a lot of people think it's a lot of money, but the thing is, this thing's going to last for a long time, and it's designing it right, so it's going to last a long time without a lot of maintenance. So I want to give them kudos on the fine job on a well-designed system. Thank you. Police and Fire, Council Members Kurt Redfield and Jim Lynn, please. I have, I have had conversations with uh, our police and fire chief, uh, you have their reports in uh, in your package. Uh, I, I'm sure Greg will give his, and I don't know if Steve's going to give his or not. Uh, he is on uh, uh, Zoom with us. But, uh, uh, gosh, plenty busy. A lot of, a lot of activity uh, out of both departments. Kirk, do you have anything to add to that, sir? No, sir. Okay, thank you, council members. Uh, financial report, Brandon, if you would, please, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, council, uh, I think uh, one of the areas that I want to just echo is uh, none of this could be done without y'all's leadership. Um, and certainly, uh, I get the... Uh, privilege of uh, working with everybody. Um, the financials in your report, uh, Lindsay and Beverly can speak specific, but uh, you may recall we were looking at about a $486,000 uh, hole this year. Um, we laid it out for the employees to minimize that amount. Um, I think we're going to fall uh, well below that. Uh, probably around 200 or so uh, use of fund balance when it's all said and done. Uh, can't be done without y'all and the employees. Thank you. And your leadership. You know, corralling a bunch of uh, radicals is kind of difficult sometimes. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that you do a really good job of that. So. We could not do what we do, all of us collectively, without having you watch us and then having David Siphon say, yeah, you're nailed some things. But, but we want to tell you how much we appreciate what you do for us. Thank you. Did you talk this Thank you. <clears throat> no? Okay. Okay, where did I get lost at? Let's see. Uh, development report. Mr. Lonnie Waters. Talk to us, Lonnie. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for recognizing what these employees do. I mean, every department they really, really do try. Thank you for recognizing that. Thank you for the new vehicle. I really appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, don't want to let that go unsaid. Don't, don't let David Hall know about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't tell it. Uh, this is the building department planning zoning. We've uh, had third. We've issued 34 building permits this month of November, one addition, uh, one electrical, three remodeling, 29 residential. We've also issued seven sign uh, permit applications. We've done 31 on-site inspections, 20 soil erosion inspections, looked at four sets of building plans. And in the month of November, we collected $28,942 for the month. And, and permitting. Uh, we've also issued five new business licenses. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you again. 
Chief Lovell, hole in one expert. Man, <laughs> old golfer. I just like to say thank you, Council, for a gracious Christmas bonus. I don't know if y'all call it that, but it is Christmas time. So I have the police department, we thank you, and I'm sure every employee does too. Uh, for the month of November, the Jackson Police Department responded to 717 calls from the 911 center. Responded to 55 motor vehicle accidents, issued a total of 135 citations, 87 for speeding, one seat belt, two shoplifting, two reckless driving, one uninsured motorist, 32 miscellaneous, three suspended or revoked, three possession of marijuana, and four unusual loss of wireless device. That's texting and driving. Georgia State Patrol issued a total of 91 for a grand total of city court, 226 citations, a total of 34 state warrants for taking for the following, one for burglary, two possession of methamphetamine, three for loitering, eight criminal trespass, nine counts of entering auto, three theft by taking, five stalking, uh, simple battery family violence, public drunkenness, and shoplifting. Miscellaneous calls responded to, 48 alarm calls, 16 disorderly, three harassment, uh, five trespassing or loitering, 43 suspicious activities, 12 domestic disputes, and investigated one burglary. In the time of COVID. In the time of COVID. I cannot wait to see 2021. I'm yes, tired of it. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Now, how are we going to do this? City of Jess, the fire department. Uh, Chief Roper. Chief Roper, are you available? Unmute. <laughs> I asked him to unmute. I am available, but I do not have my report in front of me. I apologize. Okay. Can I see it? I got it in front of me. I really hope to go unknown and fly under the right car. <laughs> That's the last time we let him remove you. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. We can read it from you. I do want to ask, uh, ask council is we need to have a, uh, a Zoom meeting next Monday. How many of you can tell me affirmatively that you can can join by Zoom next Monday? What time? Six o'clock? Let's see a show of hands if you can. Or Sonny and uh, Ann. Yes, sir. I can. I can. I can. Mm -hmm. I can. 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 I Hmm, we'll see. Well, maybe I can't then, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead and schedule that. And our very last thing that we have. Mayor, I did have one question, if you don't mind. Of course. Will we have a calendar for council meetings to approve? Uh, I know that there are two in the next year that we'll probably need to shift. I, I plan on doing it in January 4th meeting, okay. but we can we can go ahead and produce that for next Monday to review and then refine it for the fourth meeting if need be. Perfect. Thank you. So, last item is uh, I get to do this once a year, and you're going to be very happy with me doing it just once a year. But I want to give a little bit of an update on what we have done this year collectively. And that collectively does not just include uh, our city council, but also our wonderful uh, city employees, because none of this could have been done without their help also. And I'm going to touch on a few things, and I'm going to ask Brandon to touch on some more. <clears throat> but I want to bring to your attention that uh, uh, we did an intergovernmental agreement with the county and the chamber for economic development. That will be a big deal for us going forward. We did organizational charts, which allowed us to show exactly what our structure is, and that it, and that also was making us more efficient as a city for every department head. We did job description for all employees. 
we created uh, additional downtown parking at the old Integra parking lot. And that was uh, still more work to be done there in the future. We completed, completed phase one, and I believe that you reported tonight that we had the uh, fence up on phase two, right? And, and the second. <coughs> Excuse me, and that was at the playground at City Park. We began the, uh, the concept of our Peace Park in jail and with the cabin parking down there, and we will move forward with that this coming year. We identified an alcohol containment area with a downtown open carry. One of the things that I'm most proud of is that uh, we have put in software, new software, and brand new hardware, so we now have fiber optic in all department of, uh, of county administration, and I'm telling you that it is working and working well. We approved the USD loan uh, for our wastewater expansion. <clears throat> and we have a new brewery in downtown that's going to be opening very, very soon. This no way at all is totally indicative of everything that we have done. But I wanted to touch on just a few of those and let Brandon bring some more to your attention. If you will, Mr. City Manager. Yes, sir. And uh, I think you touched on it a little, but, but all of this... Um, is 24 public meetings, 176 unique new items, uh, countless hours that you all uh, essentially volunteer to be elected officials uh, to take on some of the public scrutiny uh, and some of the challenges that we face here in a pandemic. Um, having a new city attorney um, is, is a, an asset that uh, you all have kind of appointed this year. Um, the annual positions of DDA, planning and zoning, uh, getting them training, and with the help of Green Subtles to facilitate. Uh, this year we had some good uh, sessions, uh, socially distancing up in LJ. Uh, the amended charter for reading of ordinances will continue to look at how we can be more efficient and do the business of the public more efficient. Uh, I think that uh, it's indicative of the uh, nine public meetings we have to talk about millage and budget that when it comes to how we're going to do our business, uh, we will uh, disclose. And so what staff would want to do is just continue to look at ways to uh, be efficient. Um, the uh, maintenance of, of Long Swamp and the dredging, uh, I, I think... Chief and uh, Chief Roper and Lovell would point out that uh, the life saving of the turnout gear and the body armor uh, that was was motioned and approved uh, was not unnoticed and it can get wrapped up into did we do that this year? And I think what this little synopsis gives you of the 54 items itemized uh, is yes, we did a lot. Uh, we continue to do a lot. We've got a lot to do. We refinanced existing debt, uh, debt we had on the books, so we could refinance and tap into some equity to reinvest. Uh, 16 resolutions, 30 ordinances, uh, obviously going through two reads, uh, not literal reads now with the amended charter, but uh, reads nonetheless. Uh, 30 of those, there's 12 months in a year, you meet once a month. We've had 24 meetings, so obviously uh, the math is you do way more than once a month. Um, I think that's uh, important for the public to know. The, uh, the city employees, uh, every time I want to start talking about them, I get choked up. So I won't talk about them. They know how I feel. Uh, 3,000 service uh, work orders, uh, 2,976 to be uh, accurate. Uh, that does not include public safety. That's just all other departments other than public safety. Uh, Chief Lovell and Chief Roper, uh, oddly enough, want to continue to uh, count December. Remember, this is <laughs> just through the end of November. Uh, so everything that we say, we can just add another month to. Uh, they'll present their final numbers in January. Uh, I will say that thus far we've got an 85% solvability of criminal cases. I, I don't think a lot of folks think about that, uh, that is worth mentioning. I do want to toot their horn. Uh, we have a professional paid uh, public safety, police, fire, 
Uh, I think just in one week alone, Chief Roper and his team did 18 emergency medical calls. Uh, they're not always successful in terms of an end result, but uh, once again, as we said in the retreat in February, the insurance policy that the city has with regards to providing fire and police, uh, the millions of dollars, if that saves one life, it was worth it, period. Um, beyond that, the, the water department is doing good. Um, having partnerships with uh, Gilmer and Pickens, I can't stress enough how important that is uh, to continue to forge those relationships and to obtain some raw water and some potable water. Uh, the purchase of that water uh, is, is an asset for the entire community. Our water service area far expands beyond our um, population. Uh, so it touches on all the community. Uh, the GERMA uh, partnership uh, should prove to be very valuable with regards to uh, partnering for legal services and property and casualty. Um, you'll see a little synopsis on here that uh, sometimes I want to put in words that the intangibles uh, are way more than the intangibles. So all the, uh, the little things that we just don't report, the culture, uh, people getting along, uh, the community spirit, the community mindedness, uh, the partnerships, uh, will continue uh, to do with y'all's direction and leadership of uh, maintaining that. Uh, I can promise you, we do not always get along amongst each other, uh, and we oftentimes uh, arrive at a viable solution with the forethought that what's the best for the community, period. So if it's not the best thing for the community, and it's not something that you all serve, um, y'all's leadership, then usually we have to stand down, and that sometimes means me, if I don't have the, the best idea. Um, best idea wins. Thank you. And thank you all again. Thank every one of you. I appreciate so much being a part of such a wonderful team, and I look forward to what we're going to do next year because I don't think we're going to do any less. Council, a motion to adjourn is always in order. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second, please. Second. We stand adjourned. Thank you again.